with one of the biggest anime seasons, in my personal opinion, behind us. What kind of anime does Spring have on the table for us? Yep, it just keeps on going. I feel like as anime is growing, the amount of stacked seasons that come upon us always keeps increasing. It just goes to show how much the anime scene has been growing for the past few years. This is going to be a shorter video as I want to dive into some of the series that we had this season in their own separate videos. I wanted to bring up a few shows that I'm not going to make a separate video about. I didn't nearly watch as much anime as last season, about 12 series, and honestly, I still think winter is still overall a more stacked season for me. Hey, hold on a second. Why are there so many rom-coms this season? I thought that winter 2023 had maybe one of the best set of rom-com animes this season, all of them being thoroughly unique and had their own style to bring to the table. However, there are 6 new rom-coms this season and one I'm not even watching and I may even have miscounted. They also seem to have their own distinct styles as well and I don't even know how to start with them. I don't think any of them are necessarily bad by any means, but holy crap, there are way too many shows this season. Let's start with an anime that I think most people know, Konosuba. Konosuba has become one of the biggest staples as one of the best isekai that people know about, and after 3 years since the movie has come out, and 6 years since the second season, we got a spin-off of what happened to Megumi before she meets Kazuma. In all honesty, when I watched the first two seasons when they came out, I don't know why, but I was let down and underappreciative of the show. I watched the movie when it also came out, and for some reason I really liked it. Maybe it's just time that I rewatched the show. With the spin-off, it allows Megumi to already get even more development from the movie. Seriously though, where is the love for these two? Konosuba's spin-off has honestly brought a scent of fresh air back into the isekai genre. There's too many isekais this season and having a slice of life type of show with its full on comedy makes it so much more livelier than other isekais. I kind of just missed the humoristic feature in Konosuba and I'm glad to see it come back in better shape. We also get to see Union's story because in the original, all we know about her was that she was Megumi's best friend and we didn't even know anything else besides that. It's nice to see that Union is getting development and how the bonds between the two formed. Also wanted to note, the cat is very cute and apparently it's some devil from the demon world. Last thing I wanted to point out was when the ending song started playing, I started laughing so much because of how goofy the ending sequence was. A Galaxy Next Door is maybe one of the most underwatched rom-coms of the season, but it's still a solid rom-com nonetheless. Out of desperation, the main character comes to find the female lead, Goshiki, who is basically a princess and tells her to come and work as a manga artist for his book. She accepts as she is currently unemployed and wants to get better at drawing manga. One day, Kuga, the main protagonist, sees what may look like a sharp utensil passing through Goshiki. He tries to grab it and it turns out that by touching it, it makes a pact with him and Goshiki to be considered as one, meaning they will influence each other's moods. This means that if Goshiki feels sad, Kuga will get the feeling of sadness as well, and if they stray too far from one another, they can get sick. It's a weird but subtle way to connect the two characters and eventually their feelings grow together. Honestly at times, it definitely feels forced, but as they begin to realize each other's feelings, all these thoughts that I had about the show went away. It's just cute and wholesome, and Kuga's siblings honestly helps the two show more tension towards each other. Seriously, why are there more wingmans in anime right now? There's literally too many. Either way, A Galaxy Next Door isn't the main romance anime I would recommend for everyone this season, but it still has a quite unique concept of adapting towards one's feelings and how the characters may interact with one another. This show was honestly the show that I didn't expect most people to like. When I first heard about Skip the Loafer, all I saw was that it was a slice of life show that's probably the purest slice of life show that people have seen. Well, they were right. Skip the Loafer is probably one of the best shows this season for a pure sense of what high school life could be. Other high school animes like this always have to have some type of gimmick for people to like the show. The PA Works has told us that it's okay to even leave things basic like this. The main character has just moved out of their hometown and is now living in Tokyo so that she can go to school there. 
Because her hometown was quite small and her middle school graduation was just 8 students, she wonders if she can make close friends with the new environment around her. It's kind of funny to see how she adjusts to the new environment and she even does things that make her stand out. She legit misses the train a few times, runs on her bare feet on the sidewalk, running all the way to school, and somehow she is considered the best of her grade and vomits in front of her teacher. The show is relatable and it gives the feeling of nostalgia for people who have gone to high school. How nervous someone can be on their first day of meeting new people and hoping to find a place to belong. Skip to Loafer brings out a lot of those ideas and goes to show that even a show that doesn't seem to have anything new and yet basic can definitely still be a great anime. Also the OP is kinda good and it's goaded. The Aristocrats Otherworldly Adventure was a show that I had in mind for a while. The cover art looked surprisingly good and then I proceeded to get a migraine towards god dang space. This isekai is pretty much every other isekai that is considered trash these days and doesn't really bring anything new to the table. However, there is a turn of events that happens in episode 6 in which this show actually does become slightly interesting. So if you are willing to watch to that point, maybe you should watch the show. But this is definitely not one of the shows that you should watch if you like isekai or just any show in the season in general. Oh my god. I miss the show. It has been three years since the original Tony Kako Kawaii has come out, and I forgot how cute and wholesome the show was. However, it doesn't seem like a lot of other people have watched the show this season, as there are a lot of shows to watch. If you haven't watched season 1 yet, or the show in general, this show will probably give you diabetes because Tsukasa carries the show. If you already don't know, the show actually goes to show us that anime doesn't just stop on, you know, both a truck crashing into someone into an isekai and that anime don't end up with just hand holding after getting together. It gives us a lot of what happens after you get married and how life around you changes when you do so. Nothing new so far in terms of the show but it makes it seem as though you might get into Sukasa's backstory soon. I don't know but the romance is there to make up for it. My Love Story with Yamada-kun is a show that is made by Madhouse about how this girl falls in love with a guy named Yamada. If you can't already tell, this is the story that we gamers needed, Touching Grass. The main female protagonist, Akane, is cheated on by her boyfriend, which she drinks in order to cope. However, she meets Yamada along the way, and she begins playing the game in which her old boyfriend used to play with her. She realizes that even though she got dumped by her boyfriend, she still thinks of him because of the many things she had done with him. However, Yamada's cold and non-existent attitude makes her forget why she even liked him in the first place. Yamada brings a cold attitude because he doesn't know what romance is. However, because of Yamada opening up her feelings to him, he begins to slowly realize what romance is and begins to like Yamada because of it. While the relationship kind of grew at a very slow pace, Akane also begins to open up to other people including Yamada's friend group. It's a story of a new beginning and how Akane is able to move on with her new friends. If I had to relate this anime to something else, it kind of feels like a dash of Horimiya because the protagonist begins to open their feelings to something else and it's definitely refreshing to see another romance anime doing the same thing. The last anime I wanted to talk about is probably the most underrated and most underwashed show this season. My Clueless First Friend is definitely one of the shows that people don't want to watch because the show just kind of looks goofy and also it's just about people in grade school. However, the innocence of this show is probably all you need to feel a sense of warmth. Tayo is an elementary schooler who just moved to a new school because again, his town was small. He meets a girl named Nishimura, who is considered the Grim Reaper because of her appearance. This of course is shown to be why Nishimura is bullied all the time, and why no one proceeds to stop near her. However, once Tayo comes in, he basically protects Nishimura by turning hate comments into something nice about her. It's really funny to see how Tayo literally plays that Uno reverse card on every single person who bullies Nishimura and makes it seem like everyone likes Nishimura, and he literally is doing this all unconsciously. Because of this, Nishimura begins to actually take the name of the Grim Reaper to her heart and the only one that she allows to call her that sincerity is Tayo. 
This is just a wholesome elementary school story, and we haven't really seen this in recent anime. It also isn't just the reverse Uno cards. There's a lot of depth that goes into each character, especially Nishimura. Nishimura's backstory allows Tayo to also grow as a person and to realize who Nishimura really is. He even begins to stop calling Nishimura the Grim Reaper after knowing Nishimura as a person, and he does as much as possible to help Nishimura later on. This is a story of two innocent kids that want to have a happy time together before they grow up, and Nishimura becomes the person in which she wants to be. This season has quite possibly been the most stacked season for everyone, even though it isn't for me. Demon Slayer's return has made big waves as the director told us that Swordsman's Village arc would be one of the best animated shows ever. Hell's Paradise continues the hype train of Mappa, Mashal and Heavenly Delusions are amazing series to go through, and there's so many sequels this season like Dr. Stone and the long returning Ancient Mages Bride. There's a lot of shows this season, and while these are the shows that I haven't watched aside from Demon Slayer, the hype is still continuing. I uh, just quick update. Um, I just was really busy for the past few weeks. I've been getting a new computer, and I'm going to be updating my channel so that I'm going to be posting videos a lot more spread out, just so that you guys are not left hanging with months in between of breaks for uh, my anime content. So that's basically it. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.